everyone thank you very much for joining the talk warm welcome welcome to my talk walk through of django internals uh, so all of you who are joining or coming for this talk i am expecting that you must have uh, done some projects in django to get sense of the, uh, out of this talk so uh, let's get started so uh, my name is situl mistri i have around 10 plus years of experience in the industry i have led the teams in full stack web development uh, devops data engineering microservices and uh, uh, some of my past role included the solution architect chief architect where uh, i had to innovate in a uh, technology such a way that i can create value to business uh, so there i got interest in entrepreneurship and i started the company called digicute techno labs and uh, there we actually help the companies around the world to uh, do a digital product development devops data engineering microservices uh, so let's get started so let's start with a simple question how does django starts so django start with a simple command call python manner.py run server that's how we start the http server so here run server is the management command in django which spins the http server now these are 360 view of the things that django a uh, run server does internally to spin the http server so it uh, looks through all the apps in django it finds the management command all the possible management command in django code base as well as in the uh, install apps it later on parses the command line arguments it loads the settings uh, configures the logging it loads the app configurations from individual apps it loads all the model in all the apps and in the end it starts the http server now let's see the bit detail view of the same so whenever we do python manner.py anything it can be migrate or make migrations or run server any kind of any any custom user defined uh, management command then this class called django.co.management.managementutility gets initiated so there is a front door to uh, it's a front front door to start any kind of django management command and it has the so that class has the execute method which gets uh, called uh, Django uses the command parser, which actually inherits the Python's argument parser. And whoever don't know, so argument parser is the actually a utility provided by the Python itself, which converts the uh, command line arguments into a key value pair. Uh, Django actually overrides the its parse argument method to make error messages more relevant. Uh, later, Django loops over all the apps in Django code base. as well as like it goes into django's internal apps like admin or core and it tries to find uh, uh, management command uh, make a management package inside it inside that it tries to find the commands package and inside that all the module which are there they are the management commands possible management commands actually so uh, django actually prepares the list of all the possible commands that which django can have and uh, later on it checks with the internal uh, with the enter command and if it is finding the match then it goes if it could not then it raises the exception now django also tries to do some intelligence here for an example i have written python manner.py run server but django tries to predict that okay it do main run server so it tries to match the string with the list and it gets the this prediction now once it is done then django tries to load the settings now uh, what django actually does is that uh, uh, in, in django in there is a environment command uh, environment variable called django underscore settings underscore module which is the import for, path for the settings and uh, django actually tries to import that module to load the settings uh, in case it could not find that module uh, uh, settings module in that path it raises the exception uh, Django settings are lazy by nature in a way that uh, Django will not load any any uh, Django settings will not actually load any attribute or anything unless we try to access it. So, for an example, unless we try to do settings dot database settings dot install app, Django will not actually load the settings actually. So that's a kind of a, a lazy lazy behavior it implements. Now, for an example, I have imported the setting with the Django dot Conf dot settings and at the time I'm trying to settings dot database at the time Django actually dynamically imports the that module and loops over all the attributes and uh, later on it loads 
uh, in the class called lazy settings and lazy settings uh, class variable has all the key value pairs now at the time of loading this setting for django does it also put some checks for an example uh, two settings two two setting variable cannot be set together or if some setting variable is set in different way than it should be then django raises a warning or so this kind of checks are generally implemented at the time of loading the settings uh, django settings lazy behavior is actually implemented by the uh, overriding the python's class methods such as get attribute wrapper set attribute delete attribute uh, uh, there is a one more way if we don't want to uh, load the settings from the uh, module there is a, a method called configure which actually accepts the key value pair uh, and uh, that way also we can load the settings uh, but it needs to be loaded uh, so for, for to make it happen we will have to load it uh, before it loads with the uh, i mean uh, before it actually before the server starts so that's a way once we have configured uh, with the configure method we cannot configure it django resists the exception it says that okay you cannot configure twice you already configured with the uh, that method or for example you already loaded with the module so now you cannot uh, once again set it set set with the new values later on django calls us django.setup uh, django.setup actually loads the apps and the models from all the all the apps now how it happens is that there is a class called django.apps.register.apps and this class has uh, this class actually stores all the individual apps app config now all the app config can be found in the individual apps apps.py and where we will find that there is a app config actually inherited and uh, so 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 that app.py can have a multiple uh, app config class but one must be marked with a default true in case it could not find uh, in, in case it finds two classes with a default true then django resists the exception and exits uh, later on django actually uh, loops over all the all the classes in the models.py and it tries to i mean it tries to find that oh, hey i mean tell me what all models has uh, uh, has a, uh, are inherited by the base dot model. In case it finds them, it loads them, and in the end, the app config ready method is getting in cold. And in ready method, we can actually write a signals registers custom signals. We can also write some custom logic. Okay, I mean my models should not have like this. So we can write any sort of logic which will be called just before loading. Uh, now in the end, runs our command management command will be run so that module can be found in the code slash management slash command slash run server dot py and uh, uh, over there we will find that uh, uh, it is leveraging the django's base attitude b module and that base attitude b module contains the uh, contains the lots of classes and uh, definitions to how to run attitude b server so uh, that's a whole separate module for it django leverages the threading mixing socket server threading mixing which actually whenever we uh, inherit in any other class then the class who is inheriting it is empowered by a feature to spin a tcp or udp sort of server with a threading support and django also leverages wsj reference or wsgs server which in turn inherits the http server uh, which is also from the python itself and that's how the whole uh, attitude server gets started now implementation is multi threaded that means uh, if we are if if by default whenever runs server start the threading is uh, enabled so to serve each of the request new thread will be spawned by django uh, so now now let's see like everybody whoever used the django we have seen that uh, we whenever we uh, modify any file and save it then Django actually reloads itself. Now, how does that work? So Django has two ways to do it. One is state reloader, one other is a watchman. Now, state reloader is a by default Django leverages to uh, reload. What state reloader does is that whenever Django starts, at that time, it goes into sys.module, gets the list of all the modules, and uh, stores its modified time, in the sense like file modified time. And one thread spawns in the background, which actually checks it every one second uh, saying that is there any modify is there any change in the file modify time if it finds then it reloads and one other approach is a watchman 
which is a far better and performant approach uh, to to uh, use this we will have to install pywatchman library uh, so what pywatchman does is that uh, uh, instead of uh, 3d is actually looking for the modified time on lots of files by running a loop uh, watchman actually leverages the i notify fs event kq which are provided by operating system and they actually fires an event to django process django actually captures them and it resists the uh, it reloads now we have seen how does run server works in django and now we have up and running a tdb server now let's see how does request works in django so we have the server up now here what i'm trying to do is that i am just simply sending one post request on this url and sending a content type header and raw key value by data that's what i'm sending right now and uh, if i see my raw data will be look like this at the very low level at the tcp layer at the uh, you know uh, packet level so i got this data from the wiresack that's a packet tracing tool so here if we see our that curl request actually got converted into this kind of text sort of format and uh, somebody will have to parse it to get some uh, understanding for the django and later on django can parse and re return the values now how does that work so there is a http client it can be anything it can be browser it can be a curl or any kind of http uh, http client it sends the http request to our web servers web servers are like unicorn uws gi run server there are a couple of more but these are pretty much standard ones and they understand the http so they understand this kind of raw request how to parse it later on they actually communicate with the django code base with the help of ws gi protocol and uh, they also respond with the same protocol and later on the client gets the response now uh, so so whenever we see uh, the package main package where we where we see the settings.py package or there we will find a wsgi.py file and or there we will find a method call get uh, wsgi uh, handler and we will see this kind of class object is getting returned by that so it has two methods uh, called init and call call so init is getting called whenever there is a uh, run server start and call is getting called whenever there is a request so call as the environment and start response these are the two command uh, two function argument which is getting passed and uh, how does that works is so so environment actually converts that raw request into good looking this kind of key value pairs so if you see here that http accept is a header but it it's a key likewise catch control is a header but it got it get caught as a key there is a wsg to input it's a stream so dot read method on top of it will actually get us the uh, raw raw body data so this kind of and also it also gets us the wsg to multi thread and couple of more environment variable and lot of this kind of data which can be leveraged by the uh, server to response now start response can be actually used to respond to the server so there is a what what i'm trying to do is like i'm assigning a header content type text plain and also assigning a status 200 okay and start response i am uh, sending the start response uh, status and headers and the body which is hello world that's what i'm returning so call method also does couple of other things such as it has the uh, it calls a get response which is there in the wsgi handler itself it actually matches the route is route okay or not it executes all or it chains through all the middleware then it executes our view and it gets the response and returns to client but here this code is very simple in django internals uh, we will find lots of error handling there try catch there where uh, django want to make sure that if debug is true then client uh, the end client sees the errors in case it's not true then uh, client never sees the exceptions raw exception now let's come to a very uh, you know very important part in django let's see how does orm works in django so django orm is actually powered by this many classes now model is something that we inherit in all, all of our django models uh, we do model dot objects here objects is a manager uh, query set uh, is a is a class which uh, whose object is getting written whenever we will do a filter query 
then there is a query class so query class actually holds that filter data so for example i'm doing object dot filter and i'm saying name equals to abc so that name equals to abc that data will be stored by the query uh, class and later on this sql compiler actually compiles our uh, uh, that query uh, that that uh, uh, filter or create or any sort of query into good looking raw SQL queries and uh, there is a database wrapper which communicates with the database with the help of database driver to get the result and uh, uh, that's 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 how the whole ORM works now let's see in bit detail how does that works so here for our example I'm defining uh, two classes uh, one is college which has the name and address and uh, uh, I'm also defining one more model called student where there is a name, enrollment number and college. College is a foreign key to uh, college model. Now, uh, if later on if I do this models.college. underscore underscore dict, it will print me all the attributes attached to that class. Now, we did not add it, right? I mean, we simply just defined this, but couple of more, more attributes such as meta does not exist. Uh, this all things are attached so how does that work in Django how how does that happens let's see so generally we inherit the Django.db.models.base.model to our uh, Django models and that base.model inherits the Django.db.models.base.model base and model base is actually a meta class to a model so and that meta class has a new method uh, that uh, so, so that new method is getting called uh, whenever we actually import the import the uh, you know some module or something like so at the time of run server or at the time we are actually loading the models at the time only this new method is getting called and that new method in that meta class has all the logic to load all of this module uh, all of this attribute with the class. So now there is a terminology in Django uh, where uh, add to class and contribute to class uh, so what Django actually does is that uh, exactly this meta class does is that it loops over all the attributes uh, in that uh, class uh, in that model and it checks hey do you have this contribute to class method with you if uh, it founds one yeah I mean that contribute to class method is there then Django says okay call one and that contribute to class method actually attaches the attribute to our model instance our model class and uh, add to class is generally a terminology used in Django where there is a model and that model itself want to add something to uh, self so so that's a terminology we will find in Django uh, there is a underscore meta uh, which is an instance of Django dot db dot models dot options dot options and it contains a lot of utilities which help Django to form the raw query. Uh, it contains a utility such as get me all the related names, get me a specific specific field, get me uh, all the possible manager, get me a default manager, and couple of more, I mean, a lot more utilities are there in that class. Uh, model also has the underscore state, which is an instance of uh, model state. It stores couple of data such as it stores the what DB we are using uh, from the settings of database for the DB we are using. Adding is true, it's for the validation. So let's suppose that we have initialized the model with some quarks. For example, in the last model, uh, we had seen like there is a college. So in a college, I'm initializing it with some name equals to ABC, address equals to ABC. That's something I'm doing. So at the time, uh, and later on, I'm calling a save in that model. So how can Django get to know that Django need to do a update query or a insert query. So if there is a adding equals to true, then in that case, Django will create a insert query. But if adding is false, then Django will do a update, a update query. That's how it works in Django. So whenever we did get the response from the database as a, a model object at the time, this adding will be false. So on the save, Django will do an update query. Uh, to gain more performance, we can also do a select related uh, on the foreign keys. So all the object for the foreign key will be stored in the field underscore catch. Now there are a couple of methods 
which is very important in Django, which is getting called. So there is a from underscore DB and it gets called whenever we get the response from the database. Uh, model implements a couple of methods which allow certain operations such, such as we can do equal operation, we can convert model to string, we can do print, we can convert to hash, uh, we can also do uh, object serialization, uh, serialization on top of it. So in the sense we can do pickle and pickle on the models. Uh, so what does model has? Model has the field. So all the fields like character field or uh, uh, integer field, all of those are inherited uh, from uh, uh, django.db.models.field and uh, as we had seen the meta class loops over all the attributes and in checks to have contribute to class method so our field has uh, uh, that some of the field has that contribute to class method which dynamically adds the uh, new methods so such as the related names we we saw that student underscore set that was a related name that got added dynamically how did that work because our foreign key has that contribute to class uh, function which gets called and it actually adds all the related keys or related uh, names to the model uh, for example if somebody is using date field so we will get that get next by field name that's dynamically added so that's added by a contribute to class function now there are certain other uh, uh, like uh, methods in the field which is also very important so this two methods are used at the migration time to add new fields or to uh, create a new model at the time these fields are generally used. So for example, uh, we are creating our own new field and uh, what data wrapper or what Django has is the mapping with the uh, Django's known field to a database field. So for example, if there is a character field, then it should be where care with the max length. If there is an auto field, then there should be a serial. So this kind of mapping is being stored in the database wrapper class. And uh, whenever we call this get internal type, ideally it should be Django's known type. So it gets a real mapping from for the database. But in case we are creating our custom one, for example, there is an IP address type, just an example. And there is no type available in Django. Then in that case, uh, this data type mapping will return none. But Django will need uh, a real database type to do a migration so in that case db underscore type method will be called where we can simply return the real database type for example it can it can return anything like ip address is a field and we can simply return the ip address that's it and that will be actually passed at the time of uh, uh, you know uh, row uh, at the time of migration there is uh, there are a couple of more methods such as from db value so for example we got the response from the database and now we want to tweak some value or like something in that value before passing it to up front. So for an example, there is a date time field and we are getting a UTC time zone in the database or from the database and we want to convert it to our time zone. Then uh, from DB value can be used. Uh, get DB prep, value, prep save is the method which is called just before we are saving the data into database. So we can modify certain value if you, if you would like to. All of these fields are generally useful when we we are creating our internal or our own field. In general, we don't need to touch these methods. Uh, now let's see the whole crude operation, operation, how the whole flow works in Django. So here, if we see debug models dot uh, it dot objects dot create. So here, objects is a manager and create is a method method which will actually create a new row in the database. Now manager is a class where uh, uh, where it inherits the inherits the class which is actually created on the fly dynamically how does it work is that there is a base model and there is a method called from query set which takes a query set uh, class as an argument what it does internally is that it loops over the query set uh, class and uh, it checks is there any uh, tell me all the methods which has uh, which are not public in the sense not starting with a underscore as well as there is a monkey patched uh, attribute call with all the functions called query set underscore only it should be false if these two condition are matching that method is actually eligible to be part of manager so indirectly most of the uh, functions such as filter all etc will be actually we are getting from the uh, from the query set and it is getting added to a manager. Now 
whenever we do create create method uh, call at that time save in the django model is called uh, django's create method returns the models object and uh, we can define multiple managers but underscore default manager must be true in one of them so now let's see another example where what i have done is that like i have created the same same instance like models dot call dot object dot create and here i am passing name address and later on i am just doing printing the attributes and also doing a uh, getting a type of that instance if we see the type of instance it is the same you know app dot model instance i mean it's a type of mistake i'm sorry but it's ideally it should be models dot uh, uh, like models dot uh, whatever i mean it should be uh, path is wrong but it's a college instance it's the same instance actually that's 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 that so if ideally i should be getting a name should be a field right i'm getting a value address is also a value ideally i should be getting a getting a, a field field uh, field class object or something like this why why that is how how that is happening in django so as we have seen like in past slide that django models actually overwrite so uh, not overwrite sorry has a meta class called uh, model base and uh, django's model does not have any init method but meta class has the init method so whenever we try to initialize the uh, model at the time meta class init method gets called and if we see the any attribute so meta class just has bunch of method that's it practically there is no attribute in it so dynamically that meta class init method actually forms this object and it returns so that's the way we are getting the real values instead of getting the uh, the object of the fields now let's see the query which actually holds the value for the compiler to form the row sql queries now there is a class called django.db.model.sql.query which is a base class and uh, it is inherited by multiple queries in django.db.models.sql.subqueries uh, that's a module inside that we will find multiple classes such uh, for an example insert query aggregate query update query uh, every class is used for the individual application every class has their own methods such as for the insert query there is insert value for the uh, update there is add update field add related update uh, there is add filter in the, uh, in the in the in the aggregate query so all of those field uh, all of this method actually uh, what it does is that they accept certain values and they simply store all of those values into the class variables uh, and that's what they do on each of that calls so generally whenever we do uh, any create or uh, filter queries at the time these method is methods are internally getting called and they simply just updates the values in their class variable that's it later on all of this like uh, insert query uh, or uh, update query all of these classes also has a class variable called the compiler and which actually also stores the detail of uh, or, or name of the compiler which needs to be used to convert this query into a good looking raw sql query so all the compiler in django can be found in the django.db.models.sql.compiler and there is an individual compiler for each of the type for example there is a sql insert compiler to create an insert queries and couple of more i have listed down here and all of the compiler has the as sql method which uh, in general leverages the query objects or uh, query class instance so data and converts them into a raw sql query there is also execute query method in the all the compiler which actually leverages the database wrapper internally and executes the query and gets the result uh, so now let's see uh, one more scenario with the filter so filter actually returns the query set object uh, so query sets holds uh, multiple objects multiple models of uh, multiple objects it's a container for the objects query sets are lazy by nature in the sense once if i execute this then there is no database operation is done unless i try to do some operation such as if i try to print this uh, the output of this or i try to run a loop on it or try to find a length convert to boolean or try to get specific index uh, on that query set so in if if i try to perform this uh, this operation then only django will actually do a db operation uh, one more thing we must have found is that whenever we do a print on 
Django query sets, we are seeing a limited set of objects. So why does that happen? Is that Django don't want to kill uh, our application in case there is there are millions of records in the database. So what Django does is whenever we do a print at the time Django actually uh, adds a limit of 21. So it gets a limited set of records. Query sets has a catch. That means once we have fetched the record from uh, from the database, let's say I run a loop and I got 1000 records and if I try to do a one more loop then Django will not do any database operation again. Actually. So they are, it has a catch. Uh, Sometimes we have a millions of record or very huge amount of data in the table and we don't want our uh, applications to be killed. So there is a query set dot iterator method where we can pass the chunk size uh, to some value. What it will do is like it will fetch the uh, values from the database in smaller chunks of uh, 100 uh, but the drawback of this is that it will later not catch the results so uh, as many of time I will run the loop uh, Django will do a database operation uh, Django.db.model.sql.query is the class which is used to form the select query it has couple of methods such as add filter, add queue, add select related, add annotation, add extra, add ordering they are doing nothing, they are simply adding the uh, or updating the values into the individual class variable, that's what they are doing. And in turn there is a SQL compiler which takes the query instance as an argument and it forms the raw query and they are leveraging the database wrapper to execute it. So in further all the application we will find the uh, SQL compiler has to as SQL and execute query, that's the same step. Uh, behind the scene internally in the Django, just the upper uh, the query class and the and the compiler is changing. That's it. So let's see how does this chaining works. So if we, we we can see there is a filter and then I'm doing another filter. I can also do update. How does it works? So in general, dot filter is actually returning a query set object, which is a filter method. So simple, basically uh, that query set it filter. So again, that is getting called. So internally what is happening is that whenever we do this kind of chaining then Chengo is doing no operations. So this filter is reading query set and again this address underscore underscore contains is getting changed inside the uh, inside the class variable. No databases operations are happening. And uh, again like whenever we try to do operation then SQL compiler will be uh, called and as SQL will generally convert into raw queries and uh, execute and uh, the, the let on execute query method will execute with the help of database wrapper and that's it. Uh, now let's see how does update works in Django. So update query actually does the, uh, uh, does the real update database update query and it returns the number of records updated. It will not uh, do any send any kind of signals like post or pre-delete sort of signals. Uh, Django has uh, Django leverages Django dot db dot models dot sql dot subqueries dot update query. That's a class which it uses to hold the data. It has couple of methods such as add update values, add related update, and much more to store the data uh, for the query uh, for, uh, for the for the compiler to generate the raw queries. There is a SQL update compiler which will be used to uh, generate the update queries. Now let's see how does delete works in Django. So Django delete will do a delete query in Django, but uh, uh, not like update, uh, but it will actually uh, send the pre and post delete signals to all of the objects which are deleted. So if here if we are seeing like I'm doing a, doing a filter with name equals to ABC college, but uh, in turn my raw query is looking like this delete call debug college where debug college id e so how does that works and why django is doing it django is doing it because django want to send a pre and post signals after the deletion takes place so django has the django.db.monster.deletion.collector class which does the filter query to the database gets a list of objects which needs to be deleted and later on it forms the query with the uh, with the id in in the sense it deletes by the primary keys now Later on, this class also sends the pre and uh, uh, pre and post signals. Uh, there is a SQL delete compiler which actually forms the row SQL uh, row SQL query. Uh, 
uh, what will happen to my related object that depends on what is the value we have given to uh, on delete uh, at, the at the time of defining the foreign keys uh, so there is there are three options available cascade protect and restrict so in case of cascade yes my related object will be deleted because a real cascade query will be done by Django. Uh, protect will not allow such operation so that object cannot be deleted and restrict will check okay is there any any object related to this uh, this uh, uh, object uh, uh, if, if it finds so then it will not allow but in case it finds uh, it, it, it could not find any object related to that object then it allows to delete and generally for the better performance raw queries should be used for the better performance but uh, the drawback is that uh, there won't be any pre or post signals now let's see the database wrappers. So database wrappers are generally different for individual databases. For example, uh, if I want to see the Postgres one, then django.db.backends.postgres.base.py. That's where I will find the Postgres database wrapper. If I want to go for the MySQL, then again backends uh, uh, this MySQL. So this will be different for each of the databases. Why Django is doing it? Because every database is different every database has a different syntax to to the things every database supports some features and uh, that's the reason they are separate uh, it provides some methods to create a new connection get me new connection uh, it also contains the django's known type to db type method uh, db type mapping so for example if in a, this this is an example for the postgres uh, this example i got for the postgres backend so there is a class variable called data underscore type where it's a mapping if I'm defining autofill then in database it will be serial data a serial data type uh, binary field then it's a byte so then again certain other things are also defined like if I'm doing exit then how the syntax look like so it will be equals to percentages so percentages we will be re replaced by the real value then contains is like like percentage as uh, then there is a pattern matching then again it's a defined here actually this is how Django will actually make the queries there is a class called database feature so not all databases are same as I just said so some database supports some features some doesn't so what Django does is that there are lots of class variable in this uh, in this uh, database feature which is boolean in nature and uh, at the time of forming the uh, raw query or like SQL compiler leverages this this database feature class or uh, or uh, it also restricts some of the operations so for example if I'm doing some operation on query set at the time Django raises the exception okay uh, so that's that's the that's a thing for the database feature now let's see the class called the database operations so every DB has a different syntax for running some different kind of queries so for an example set time zone can be a different SQL in in MySQL it might be different syntax in the in the um, Postgres so this all standard methods are there for an example set time zone SQL so it has the so this is a function which actually returns the query like this set time zone percentage s so this percentage s value will be later on be replaced in replaced in the query uh, it also contains lots of this kind of function like data date time cast date sql so there might be some in some databases it can be databases it can be like uh, like data type and it's a function in the database somewhere it can be date space so or like in postgres it can be like for example double column and data type so all of those things are pretty much defined in these methods so that's it thank you very much guys Any any questions? Uh, if you do have a question, just go to the middle. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, it was really okay. good. Um, did you find it difficult to put together with Django changing through different versions to put together a talk or was this were the internals that you discussed sort of common to different versions I know there's Django 2, Django 3 and I think there's Django 4 now was, was it difficult to with, 
like sort of a moving target to try to put together a talk such as this. Can, can you repeat? I could not yeah, hear. Yeah. Um, just was it was it difficult to put together a talk because like Django changes, like like Python, but Django changes as time goes by. So you've kind of like um, what what. What could be an internal in one version of Django is not the same okay. in the next version. Yeah. So, uh, see, I mean, in general, version changes. Yeah, I mean, uh, that there are that can be some changes, but it depends the depends on the what is coming in the future version. But I have I have not seen lots of changes. I I, I have seen like couple of very you know small set of things are changing, or I can say twenty percent or. Uh, that set of things are changing, but not whole set of things are changing. And if there is some whole new set of features are being added, then Django also makes sure that other feature is not being break. So they make it safe. So your existing code is anyways not going away in one sort. So they also give a warning like we are going to deprecate after this version, that version. So we will not find that, okay, suddenly that code is not there. We'll find it for some time, and then one or two versions we will find that okay, that's being modified. Actually, hope I answered your question. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. All right. Then, if there's no other questions, then um, we'll get ready for the next speaker. Thank you okay. so much. Okay. Thank you.